So guys, welcome back to my channel, Brian the Free, and Great Sarah is back, back for another shave, the shave again. So I'll be doing another shave. I got about two and a half days worth of growth in my face, and ready for a shave, but today is a, a different shave. I'll be doing an old school shave with a razor that I, kind of like the one I did last week with a razor that I found, old school razor that I haven't used in a while. So this is gonna be a shave with the Gem Micro Magnet, mag, I say Magnetic, Micromatic Razor, this is a single edge bladed razor, and right there it says Gem Micromatic. And this is this is a razor that's been around for a long time. I want to say these were built, these were made between 1934 and 1947. And this razor is pretty hefty, nice construction. I want to say it's brass. And there's a few patent numbers on the back. I'm not sure you guys can see that right there and there. It just says made in USA, so definitely a, a nice touch make, using a razor made in USA. So a vintage razor for sure. And these were patented back in 1929 by Gem Razor, and but they didn't start producing them until 1934 to 1947. So this is their this is their clog proof razor. So when they say clog proof, it means pretty much the uh, shaving cream or soap, the lather just goes through those little channels right there. So it kind of keeps the you know, keeps the the, um, the lather from clogging and also your hair from clogging in the razor too. So it's just a, yeah, just a different, pretty cool innovation back 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 in the day for them. So this is a open, turn to open razor and it takes single edge blades and the blade I'll be using for this razor is gonna be the CVS branded single edge blades. Made, I wanna say that these were made by Persona I could be wrong, or they could be a sub, uh, you know, a sub company from American Razor Company, which I believe is still around. So either Persona or ASR. So this will be the blade I'm using. So it'll be the first use of this blade in this razor. And very, very nice. Pretty heavy razor too, by the way. But I'll be using that razor and, and keeping it, keep it with the old school. I'm gonna be using my, my Rubber Set 153 finished brush. So this is a gold and black handled, Bakelite handled vintage brush. I found this guy in an antique shop a while back. I restored it, it was pretty grimy, had a nice, really cruddy looking uh, bore knot in it that I took out and just reset it with a Maggard's uh, Timberwolf knot. This is a synthetic knot by Maggard's 24 millimeter, so decent backbone, pretty nice and soft. So managed to bring it out, managed to polish and bring out the lettering too, which is pretty cool. Just says genuine rubber set on right there on the lettering there on the black black part of the handle. And the bottom just says made in USA, sterilized, uh 153 rubber set. So they rubber set usually puts their model numbers right on the bottom of the brush there. And they always say sterilized because back in the day they, they would sterilize the horse hairs or animal hairs that they would put in the brush. So that's hence the name sterilized, but Really don't have to worry about that because I'm using a synthetic knot and this is a vintage brush. So I'm keeping it old school. And the soap I'll be using is no other than Old School by Moon Soaps. Just a very, very nice scented soap. And guys, ready for the shave. Got about two days, about two and a half days worth of growth. Ready to kick in with a shave. And let me wash my face, get it nice and get it nice and hydrated for the shave. And I'll probably use my I haven't used this in a while, so I'll probably use it for the shave. It's, it's, um, I can get it out here. Don't ever use it very often because I really don't really use it, need, need to use a pre shave. But I'll, use, I'll be using my, my Cube 2.0 by PAA. This is the Cube pre shave, and I put a pretty good dent in this. I had it for a couple years, so maybe three years. And I'm surprised I didn't go through this whole thing yet, but I'll be using this for my shave, my pre shave. I really don't need to pre-shave, but I'll just use it because it's kind of warm here in Florida right now. It's been up and down with the temperature today. It's 80, so I'm gonna have a nice cool shave. But guys, let me rinse my face, give my, give my face fully hydrated. Yep, ready for a shave, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Got my pre-shave on my face, the, the Cube 2.0 pre-shave by Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements. So I kind of rubbed it in my face, got it, got it, you know, got it nice and slick and started. And one thing about the razor. I'm so glad they still make blades for these things, but it's very easy to load. You just drop the blade right in there. 
So it just kind of fits right. There's a little notch right there in the middle of the razor. See the notch in the blade? It just fits right in that little notch. Just drop in there, really easy to load. Yeah, very, very nice. Like I say, old school is sometimes the best way to shave, and this is a perfect example of that. But let's try this. Got a nice even blade alignment there with the razor, very nice. And I got the old school by Moon Soaps loaded on the Rubber Set 153 brush. Do that first face other. Hope you guys are doing well. Just got started a little bit late today on Sunday because I was up last night watching the uh, Royal Rumble by, you know, the wrestling R Royal Rumble to WWE. It was a paper pay per view thing per viewing, but if you have that app called Peacock on your TV, you know, you can stream it for free. So I mean, well, you can stream it if you have the app without paying the pay-per-view uh, fees for it. So and it turns out to be a little bit cheaper to do that way than just to buy the app. There's plenty of like pretty decent movies on there, pretty decent uh, wrestling content on on the Peacock app. But I was up late, up late last night watching the uh, the Rumble matches. I mean, it, it started at eight o'clock and got done about about close to midnight. So but nice lather from the moon soaps. Really nice tallow based soap. Uh, they have some great ingredients in soap. I want to say they have shea butter and mango butter and different oils, which makes it nice and slick. Nice lather. So I'll be using that using that soap for this nice razor here, this vintage razor here. So let's do the micromatic first pass. Yeah, last time I used this razor, I got a pretty darn, pretty darn, darn good close shave. So, oh, got a little weeper right there. A little bit too close. That was from another day I got a, a cut from something. I don't know how it got on my face, but I just opened, managed to open it up again, but. Really easy razor to use. The blade gap is really not too aggressive. And also the angle is really easy to use. So someone that's going from a cartridge razor to something like this would probably find it easier to use than maybe going to a double edged razor. I think it kind of keeps takes the guesswork out of what angle to use. Just lay your face right on that little angle there and you're good to go. So Jim Razor was actually, started by a gentleman that worked for Star Razor for 23 years, uh, Jerry Reichard. So Star Razor, you know, of course, like I said last week, it was, I want to say two brothers that came from came from Germany to New York City and started started their own razor company. And I think they started back in nineteen eight. I'm sorry, eighteen seventy five. I think I'm right with that date. But they you know they patented their razor. They started they 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 were accredited for making one of the very first safety razors ever. So way before Gillette. But they had people that worked for him besides the brothers that in in developing and design, you know, designing the safety razors. And one of those key important guys was Jerry Reichardt. So he left the company after 23 years and started his own company called Gem uh, Cutlery Companies, which he started in 1898. And 
many people can argue that that he actually stole the design from Star Razor for his. They had a razor called the the Campe, uh, Rake, which was which was the name of their, their first single edge single edge bladed safety razor, and they say they say like he borrowed heavily from that design in making the uh, gem razors. His first one. This is a later design uh, gem razor, but I think the very first ones were just basically. You know, you pop the top and put the blade in there and pop it back down. I think they're held by a spring. And what's funny is that the Jerry Rockhart actually left. I'm not sure if he left Jim Razor, but he, he went in another direction. Also created an Everready Razor Company too, so... This is all research I, did. I, I read online about the history of Jim Razor. That this um, Jerry Reichard, you know, he created Jim Razor, also created Ever Ready. So, so he was responsible for two different razor companies, which is kind of I found fascinating, to say the least, about you know about how how what happened with the uh, vintage razors back then. Wait, wait, guys, that's the first pass. I managed to get a weep right here and right here. So, yeah, definitely a nut. I would say maybe a little bit more more aggressive than mild, but it's still not an aggressive razor. I just I think not using this thing in a while, I just happened to cause a, a weeper right here that I already had and cause this one, this new one here from, from the blade. This is the first use blade of the uh, razor too from CBS. So, but guys, let me rinse my face and be back for that second pass. And hopefully it'll be a more uninventful pass. But I'll be right back. See you guys, right back. I'll be back for that second pass. And let me go my face, guys. I'll be right back. So, guys, I'm back for my second pass. So that was a really close first pass. Yeah, it took no problem taking out the hair off after two eight two and a half days worth of growth. Yeah, very close shave. So I might be just doing a two pass shave for the shave. So this will be my second pass. I'll be using against the grain. So let me go and load my face up. The moon soaps here. Yeah, so speaking about Star Razor, I do have a vintage razor that looks a little bit like this pitch right here in my shape that I'm looking for. I haven't found it yet, but I know I used it once on camera, but I want, want to definitely take that out and use it and just compare the shade with this razor with, with the Gem Micromatic uh, single edge razor. Yeah, this slather is nice and slick. I love Moon Soaps. Great soap base, real nice, slick lather. All right, guys, second pass with the uh, Gen Micromatic razor against the grain. Yeah, so I love history, but especially when it comes to vintage razors and shaving razors, brushes, whatever you have in shaving. And I was trying to find the date code for this brush I have, the 153 by Rubber Set, and come to find out, there's really no way to tell. There's no numbers on the brush to really, you know, no identif identifiable numbers to really pinpoint an exact date. So you're going by estimation. But Rubber Set was actually a different, has, has a unique history in itself. It was actually started by a farmer by the name of Andrew Albright Sr. Who saw that you know back then they were making brushes with you know setting them in in glue, in glue shellac different things you know setting the you know the natural hairs you know animal hair for paint brushes and like these different things which would a lot of times the hair would come out you know would would be easily pulled out if you're, if you're brushing you know painting a, you know doing any, any you know any kind of painting on a house or something you know, or what have you and one. One day he saw, I want to say he had an idea about setting the, 
the animal hair bristles bristles into rub in, into actual rubber compound. So he saw that saw that it was probably a better way of doing that. So he did he started his own company. I think it was called man, I can't remember the name of the company it was called back then. I'll probably have it right there on the screen. But he started setting all his hairs in rubber compound. You know, rubber based compound. And that was in 1878. So this is this stuff's happening around the same time with all the razors, you know, coming out like this, like the the star razor. So turn of the century stuff coming on going on back then. But they only made painting brushes back then. So it wasn't until he passed away in, I think it was 19, 1904, somewhere in that period, he's passed, you know, the senior passed away in 1904, and Andrew Albright Jr. took hold of the company. And he actually, another employee that was with the company, you know, he, he, he took over the company, but he was open to innovation, um, new ideas, and one of his employees that was not named noticed that there was a lot of shaving ads you know, for razors, brushes. Brushes back then were in high demand because you know people were doing it at home. They they weren't going to the barbershop necessarily for for shaving. So they so they the, his employee and, and and himself decided, hey, you know, why don't we just start making you know, making shading brushes too also because we had the equipment in the company, you know, we had the equipment in the factories to make it. We had the same hairs, you know, that they make the brushes out of, you know, the same the same animal hairs they make the shading brushes out of, which was boar and badger. So they just decided to go full you know, full swing into making shading brushes. You know also making other things too, like the paint brushes too. But they also started making mainly the shading brushes. I think he put a lot of his money into that, you know Albright Jr. And it became very successful for the rubber set, actually. But rubber set was, I think they made shaving brushes for like about 49 years in, in total, years they made shaving brushes. But they were actually bought by Bristol Myers in, oh, I want to say, later in, in 1930s, 1934, I believe, Bristol Myers bought them out. And they continued to make shaving brushes, but they also started making two brushes too. Well, and from what I found out, their two brushes were pretty, were pretty decent two brushes back then too for rubber set. But they were bought out by Sherman Williams in 1956. So keep in mind, they made brushes from for 40, 44, 49 years from from you know from 1904 to to the 50s. And Sherman Williams, which was a paint company, bought them out because they wanted the they wanted their technology to make shape you know keep making shape you know painting brushes. And they soon phased out the the shape brush department or or division out of, you know, of the company. So. So, so not very long, I would say 50 years maybe of shaving, of shaving brushes by rubber set, but pretty, pretty, pretty decent history, pretty, pretty cool history about that, that, that uh, shaving brush company. But guys, yeah, very, very smooth. I don't feel much hair at all. Yeah, very, very nice. Yeah, very close shave. This will be my, my last pass. Let me rest my face, guys, and I will be right back. All right, guys, back to my post shave. So I'll be using the old school after shave balm that came with this with the soap and really didn't talk much about the soap but the soap f soap was phenomenal the the lather the the residual slickness of the soap old school was awesome soap by the way this is by moon soap so they make some great soaps and i meant to ma mention the the scent notes because it's really really nice in here the bathroom smells really nice it basically it says on our website notes of tobacco play on top of vetiver leather mahogany and sweet vanilla so all that blends into a nice very very nice scent very very enjoyable shaving and i would say sense strength on this is probably about six not too strong not too light probably just right just right for shaving and i'll be using the aftershave balm we shake this up this is a really light balm so 
not really thick. A little bit more watery on the watery side, so. But yeah, definitely not heavy. Very, very nice. Nice post shave feel from the soap and also from this too. That I get from Moon Soaps. Yeah, very, very nice. Yeah, very nice old school shave for sure. So that's my soap, guys. I use the old school by Moon Soaps and the Micromatic Razor by Gem. And this thing's pretty heavy. This thing's probably about, I wanna say, I looked in line, it was 63 grams. Or actually, I weighed it. I think I weighed it. I wrote it down somewhere. I weighed it. It was 63 grams. And it's three and a half inches long from the top to the bottom. So, decent sized razor, decent sized weight. Nice brass, brass construction. But yeah, definitely delivers a smooth shave. These are very underrated razors, by the way. And you find these a lot of times in, I don't know why, but I find these more in antique shops and flea markets more than, than vintage double-edged double -edged razors. It seems like these, these were made a lot, it could be me, but these were made a lot more than the double-edged razors back then. Uh, you know, back then, back in the you know early part of 1930s, whatever, or 50s. I see a lot of these in the antique shops, definitely. More so than, than vintage Gillette's. In my opinion, I do, at least where I go. And that's the razor I used. I used the brush, the rubber set 153, which is a vintage brush. And great piece of history. I'm glad I owned this brush. It was fun restoring it. It was it was pretty fun uh, sitting a knot in there and actually having to have the, the opportunity to keep using this brush. But guys, if you see these brushes in antique shops, definitely don't hesitate to grab one. Clean it up and, and take out your own knot, the old knot if it's really bad, and reset it and just use it because these are fantastic brushes. Fantastic piece of history to, to own for sure. But guys, that's my shave. Hope you guys enjoy. Hope you guys have a good week. And probably next time I make a video, it'll be February. So I'll see you next month. Enjoy your shaves, guys. Take care.